Hello, and welcome to the Endeavor demonstration of online IWCF assessments. My name's Scotty. I'm going to be walking you through a quick demo of how you would use Endeavor for online IWCF assessments. The Endeavor ecosystem uses browser-based simulation. The benefit to using the simulator in the browser is as long as you're using a modern browser. I'm going to be using Mozilla Firefox today you can access the simulator from anywhere in the world. Any additional students like supervisors, assessors, or uh, auditors, for example, can connect to the online simulator via the use of clients. But first up, let me demonstrate the web browser simulator. All right, so to start, what we're gonna do is we're gonna log into the Endeavor One website where we will access the simulator. Uh, so we've got the website up. The students will be provided with login credentials, username and password. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to proceed to log in and we'll have a look at what courses I have been enrolled into. All right, so we're logging in now. The first thing in the Endeavor One website, it'll give you a list of courses that you have been enrolled into. The two though that we're going to focus on today, of course, are the IWCF simulator courses. So I've got two loaded here, which is a, a sub C course and a surface course. We'll have a look at the surface course initially. So what I'm going to do is click on that tile and that will open up. Now, when I open this up, I'm presented with four modules initially, what, where two are the simulations and two are partly pre-filled pre -filled, sorry, kill sheets. Okay, so what we have, talking about the simulations first, the first simulation we have is a pre-drill simulation, Surface B1 pre-drill simulation. So this simulation is loaded, uh, obviously pre-drill, but pre-setup. So what would need to happen here is the driller would come in and they would line everything up and prepare for the drilling operation. The other simulation here, Surface B2 Kick Taken simulation, is the same well with the kick already taken and the well shut in. So this would be used if you needed to use or start the simulation with the kick already in the well and the BOP is already closed. Uh, as mentioned, we also have two partly completed kill sheets. Um, the difference between the partly completed kill sheets is the pre-drill kill sheet doesn't have the drill depths completed on the kill sheet, where the kick taken kill sheet does have drilled information on the kill sheet. Let me, let me open up this kill sheet and I'll show you. So we'll click on start and it's going to open up the kill sheet in another window. Um, this is filled out on the standard IWCF kill sheet. Um, and as you can see, it's got the depths on the kill sheet uh, that we took the kick at. Uh, obviously, just to confirm, there is no kick information filled in on the back of the kill sheet. That would be the role of the supervisor to complete that. Okay, so we'll close that. Now, obviously, it's come up now as complete because I have opened that kill sheet. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to initially load up this first simulation. All right, so the simulator is loading. So just as a reminder, the browser-based simulator, we are going to assume that the browser is the role of the driller. Okay, so the simulator in the browser is the role of the driller. So the simulator is now loaded and the driller has full control over their options. They can go through and do a complete setup and of course do everything they need to for the IWCF exam, set their alarms, go drilling, do what they need to do. Now, because this driller could be in a location that's obviously separated via from the supervisor, we are now going to look at how the supervisor will connect using clients. Okay, we are now going to look at the role of the client to connect to the simulator. So as I said, the driller has loaded up their simulator um, but now, as I said, we need to give the supervisor and the assessor accessibility to this simulator so they can either manipulate or have visibility and view what is happening during the assessment. To do that, as mentioned, we'll be using clients. If you require a client, we will email you a link 
and you will click on that link and download the client. Okay, we have downloaded the client. We're ready to run it. When you download the client, you will download five files in total. But the one we're going to use is this one here, uiclientv2.exe. It's an executable file. So one of the real benefits to this client is you don't need to install anything onto your computer. It will run as a standalone application. So let's open up this client. I'll double click on the executable. I'll close that. Okay, so this is what the client will look like. It's, it's important to be aware that the client by itself won't run the simulator. The client itself simply connects to a simulator. So how it's going to work is our online browser-based simulator will act as our quote-unquote server and the client or clients will simply connect to the server, the online browser-based simulator, which is going to act as our server. You can connect multiple clients at once uh, to the online simulator. As I said, the client will simply just then respond to any controls used on the simulator uh, or give you full visibility of the simulator for an assessment or an auditing uh, purpose. So now we're going to look at how we connect the client to the online simulator. If I hover my mouse up to the top right corner of the online simulator, you will see this little pop-out tab. If I click on that pop-out tab, it provides me with a unique URL for this session. I'm going to copy that. Now, I say unique because if I was to now close the simulator and open it back up, it will be a different URL. So this is important to know. And it's very important to be aware that if I had a client, I couldn't randomly connect to somebody's session without knowing that information. So it is important that that URL is provided by the user to the assessor or the supervisor or both if required. Okay. So as I said, we've copied that. I'm now going to control V, paste that into my client. The next thing I need to be critically aware of is the user type. If this was a supervisor, we will go user type, click on supervisor, and then simply click connect. While that's connecting, I can close out that little tab. Uh, we're going to wait for this to load. There's no limit to the amount of clients you can have connected, but generally it would only be two or three potentially. For example, if the driller was operating the online simulator, you might have a supervisor connected, you might have an assessor connected, and potentially an auditor or something like that if required. So I've set this initial client up as a supervisor, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to open another client and I'm going to set that up as if that was the assessor. So we simply open the client again, close that. All right, now the same principle applies. This time the user type though, we're going to make instructor, which represent the instructor assessor role. I will copy that information again. I will control V, paste that in there, connect. We can close that in the meantime. And we now have the online simulator and two clients connected to that online simulator, where the top one represents supervisor, the bottom one represents assessor. Now, just to give you a quick demonstration, what will happen on one uh, on the simulator will affect the client, will affect the client, and vice versa. So, if I was to go on to well control, choke pumps, well control, choke pumps. Of course, if the supervisor was to manipulate the choke, the driller will see that, uh, and of course the uh, assessor, if required, um, and vice versa. If the driller was to manipulate something, the supervisor and the assessor will see that occur. Okay, I've loaded the simulator again with the kick taken module. So currently we have loaded the simulator with the influx in the well and the well shut in. We still have the driller user here. We still have the supervisor user here and the instructor assessor user type here. 
it's important to be aware of the different user types because different user types have different screens visible. For example, the instructor, if I go to rig data, downhole, the instructor has a downhole screen visible, the instructor assessor that is, where that screen is not visible to a, a supervisor or a driller. That becomes really important because as I said, the assessor now has visibility of this downhole screen where they can view things like under or overbalance uh, and various other different information that the driller and supervisor don't have access to. I have reloaded the sim with the pumps running and the choke open. So essentially what we are now doing is circulating out the kick with the original mud, i.e. the first circulation of the drillers method. I've done this because I want to demonstrate how the assessor can uh, create incidents uh, for the assessment. So just to demonstrate, because of the, of the different users here, if I was to go into actions, um, there's limited actions that the driller and the supervisor have access to. But I'll go back to the choke screen for both of the driller and the supervisor. But if the assessor was to go into actions, they now have, and then go to incidents, they now have the ability to create incidents for the driller and the supervisor. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to generate or trigger an incident from the assessor instructor client. And you will see that the driller and the supervisor will react. So for example, if I was to go equipment incidents, choke one plug with the incidents you have some options you have a countdown timer um, or you can trigger at a particular depth if it was a drilling incident um, because it's a plug choke the percentage blocked and the ramp up time for that incident so for example here for the percent blocked let's say i want the choke to be a total of 40 percent plugged that might be a bit too harsh let's go 30 percent for example 30 percent plugged i'm going to go countdown of 10 seconds for example now i'm going to click on cause incident so this is going to plug choke one as you can see we are using choke one so let's cause this incident and let's watch what happens all right so oh, oh i accidentally closed the choke there let's come back over here to the supervisor screen um the assessor can cancel that at any time all right so that choke has started plugging now i can see straight away casing is rising followed by uh my drill pipe pressure. So of course now our role will be to shut down. So the supervisor can now coordinate. So what we might need to start doing is ramping down the pumps and starting to close in the choke. Ramping down the pumps. I'm just going to stop the pumps completely. We'll close the choke. I haven't exceeded my MASP, of course. It was just a bit of a demonstration. But this is to demonstrate how easily by the assessor, by using this client, can trigger incidents that will cause the issues for the driller and supervisor. If the assessor wanted to repair them incident, they simply repair it, or of course we do have two chokes. So it would be more, uh, in this case, it might be just as worthwhile to uh, route the choke manifold through the second choke, or of course that can be repaired if required. Okay, so I've been circulating for quite a while now. I've started bringing the gas bubble closer to surface, as we can see on our instructor assessor client. Um, what we're gonna do now is demonstrate how we would finalize the assessment and review our results, and of course, uh, print our graphs out. So um, what we're going to do for this is the assessor will take the role here. So for the purpose of this demonstration, assessment's over. Let's finalize. So the first thing we're going to do is uh, the assessor will go back, menu, now debrief. That's where we need to go. That's where we'll be able to have a look at our graph and review our assessment and see how we went. So we're going to click on debrief. The first thing it's going to ask us is, uh, do you want to save? Now, we do strongly recommend saving this because what that will do is that means you will be able to uh, re-edit the graph later if you need to. Okay, so we'll save that. It's just currently populating all the data to save. 
uh, all right, I'm going to save it to my desktop. You can, of course, use this little file browser to save it wherever you'd like. So we'll save it there. Um, I'm going to save it. We'll name it. I'm going to clear that. I'm going to call it demo assessment and click set. And that will save it. You will also see that pop up on my desktop. So that's the actual module. If you would open that up, that's simply a text file. It won't actually load the simulator. It's just a text file. Okay, so we've now moved to the debrief menu. Now, uh, what it will do is it will present three screens, grading, drilling log, and well control log. Um, grading, for the purpose of this, simply means that we've completed the assessment 100%. That's not the score that we have achieved as such. Um, but what we're going to do is we're going to go and have a look at the well control log. I'll bring that up on all three screens. Now, a couple of things you're going to notice straight away. What it does is it flags where the incident occurred. Now, this is really handy because uh, as we're looking at our assessment, we can actually see that the plug choke kicked in at this point and bottom hole pressure rose as a result. We bled off pressure through the choke and restarted the operation. Um, we can hide that if you don't want to print that. That's up to you. Um, I'm going to leave it active for the moment. It just, as I said, it's a good indication of, of how we went with that plug choke. Okay. So everything's looking quite good here. Uh, I want to quickly talk about customizing the graph. Of course, you can fully customize this graph as much as you need. We have saved these already now with uh, everything required for the IWCF assessment. But you can, of course, add as much information into this or as little as you'd like. Um, if I didn't want, for example, choke position to be on this graph, I simply click on that. And then I click on remove from chart and that will remove that from chart. But if I wanted to add additional parameters onto the graph, I simply click add chart. And then I have a large list of uh, additional uh, uh, trace, uh, trace that I can throw into the graph. But we don't want to add anything else for the moment. So uh, everything's looking pretty good. So we also, as I said, I'll cover this quickly. We also have a drilling log. So one of the key benefits is the driller might require a different set of parameters so they can view how they went, for example. So uh, one of the good things about the Endeavor ecosystems, it will print out two graphs so you can customize them as much as you need. OK, but for the purpose of this, let's say we're very happy with these graphs. We're happy to proceed with the assessment. So now what the assessor is going to do, he'll click on menu. They will enter names. Now, this becomes the important part because this is a requirement for IWCF. So we'll say driller, Scott. Um, supervisor, we'll say Kim. And finally, for uh, assessor, we'll say Josh. Some of our team members here. OK, so we'll click on OK. And now we want to export the results. So we'll click on export. And what this will do is export them uh, to the wherever we choose. Now, uh, include faults. Yeah, I do want to include my faults into this graph. So yes. Uh, where are we going to save them? To the desktop. I'm really happy with that. We'll click on save. We'll see the two graphs appear right here. Okay. Now, when we have a look at those two graphs, we can see straight away that one is the drilling log. It, it initially brings up the name of the driller, the first name that you entered. Uh, so drilling log and of course, well control. And quickly, if I open up the well control, um, we will see this is the graph. This is the graph that's printed. Okay, so we can have a look and we've got all our information on here. Uh, of course, our names, there is a space where uh, those uh, persons can sign off uh, on that. I'll close that for the moment. One other thing I do quickly want to show you with the graph is the interactivity of the graph. Um, it includes a live ruler. So if I click and drag anywhere on the graph screen, it will bring a ruler along. And what it will do is it will show what the uh, appropriate data was at that point in time. So for example, I use this quite a lot. So for bottom hole pressure being the pink line here, uh, I can see the bottom hole pressure is 38.55 at that point, um, but I can see the bottom hole pressure certainly climbed as a result of that plug choke. And of course the bottom hole pressure dropped as I bled that pressure from the well. So this is a really good tool to review the assessment with your student. Um, it gives them real time visibility on how they went at that particular moment in time. Okay. All right. Well, thank you for watching. I um, hope you enjoyed the Endeavor video here on IWCF assessments. If you do need any further information, don't hesitate to reach out to one of our team members. Thank you.